What if? Well, that's a question we ask every week on this program. Well, the people promoting a new approach to dealing with the world's energy needs are asking, what if we connected electrical generators in the northern and southern hemispheres to take advantage of seasonal differences? What if we connected power grids across time zones to take advantage of night and day demand differences? They say the result would be a global energy grid that could not only provide greater energy efficiency, but reduce hunger and promote world peace. In this week's Future File, Lori Waffenschmidt explores this what if. In a modest building in San Diego, a small office houses the seeds of an idea that could revolutionize the way energy is distributed around the world. At least some say it could. Peter Meissen is the director of the Global Energy Network International, Genie for short. You no longer have to have your generator right next to the population because this technology says generate it where it's cheap and abundant and just deliver it where the demand is delivered to the load. The technology he refers to deals with transmission efficiencies and metal alloys and ceramic insulators, advancements which already allow utility companies in regions around the world to be linked together to share power. And Meissen says that at some point in the future, we'll be able to do what scientist and inventor R. Buckminster Fuller proposed 20 years ago. Sooner or later, as we improve this technology, the, the notion of actually connecting the daytime side of the planet with the nighttime side of the, of the, of the planet, with which Bucky talked about, would be an enormous breakthrough because then you could actually keep your most efficient generators running 24 hours a day. So Genie is promoting the connection of regional power systems into a single, continuous world electric energy grid. Would it work? While others aren't as quick to recommend the idea, they don't really say it's impossible either. Engineer Fred Denny works for the U.S. Association of Investor-Owned Electrical Utilities. I think you have to really look at each interconnection on a case-by-case -case basis. And it may make sense in some cases. But the two things that I would uh, suggest, number one, that that you analyze a number of factors. And number two, that you consider the alternative, which would be local generation. The U.S. Department of Energy calls the Genie proposal an innovative approach that merits further analysis, but says it's an idea whose time has not yet come. But Meissen says the Soviet Union isn't waiting. Well, I just had a call from Sergei Rodjinko. He's, um, he's the gentleman who's uh, Gorbachev's environmental advisories. Meissen says Soviet officials have been much more interested in the global grid concept for good reason. The massive potential for the Soviet Union for this technology, import and export, is, surrounds them. Um, they, have a, they have a market, if you will, in, in Western Europe. They have a market throughout the Middle East, a massive market in India, China, and Japan in terms, again, import-export ex that doesn't exist simply because nobody has made the connections. And Meissen sees amazing potential for developing nations, especially in North Central Africa, where he says some type of solar collectors could be constructed to take advantage of the direct sun. Excess power could then be sold to supply those developing countries with desperately needed money. But he's quick to point out that what's needed right now in most African villages are small generators to meet basic needs. However, part of what the Genie Initiative proposes are all of the benefits electricity can provide once a global connection is made. As Genie supporter and singer John Denver tells it, This proposal supports a global plan for ending hunger, third world development, environmental benefits, stemming the population explosion, and a universal increase in our standard of living. A pretty tall order for a bunch of wires. Whether the idea of a global energy grid will work, whether utility companies and governments are interested in the concept, and just what the grid could achieve will all be discussed at a conference in July in Canada. The U.S. government won't be there, but the Soviets will, along with representatives from several other nations and utility companies from around the world. The hurdles to this technology are really political. You don't have to ask an electron um, where to go. It'll just follow the path of least resistance. So it's up to the politicians to find their own path of least resistance if the global energy grid is to become a reality. Lori Waffenschmidt, CNN, Future Watch. A San Diego